What if the continents never split? No borders, no oceans, just one land and one global death trap. A supercontinent where storms never stop, monsters never went extinct, and humanity crushed beneath the weight of a world gone wrong. Pangaea wasn't just Earth's past, it was its most dangerous form. This is the terrifying truth of what Earth would look like if Pangaea still existed. 250 million years ago, Earth was unrecognizable, no continents, no coastlines, just one colossal landmass surrounded by a deadly, planet-spanning ocean. Its name was Pangaea. At the center of this supercontinent, a scorching wasteland. Endless deserts, bone-dry riverbeds, and air so hot it could kill. Along the edges, relentless mega-monsoons battered the coastline, flooding everything in their path. This wasn't Earth as we know it. It was a planet of extremes, blistering heat inland, violent storms at the shore, and nowhere safe in between. But this world wasn't empty. It was ruled by monsters. Step into what's now North America, and you'd find Postasuchus, a 20-foot tank of a predator, armored head to toe, with jaws built to crush bone. Head south to modern-day Brazil, and Sorosuchus is waiting, 2,000 pounds of unstoppable force. Even the rivers weren't safe. Beneath the murky waters lurked Smilosuchus, a crocodile-like killer with nostrils high on its head, perfect for ambush. Every corner of Pangaea was a battlefield, and the creatures that ruled it, faster, hungrier, meaner than anything alive today. But then, it all changed. Tectonic forces deep beneath the crust began tearing this world apart. And that raises one terrifying question. What if that never happened? Imagine Earth today, but instead of continents scattered across oceans, every landmass is fused together into one. North America jammed against Africa, Australia tucked beside India, no Atlantic, no Pacific, just a single supercontinent surrounded by an endless ocean. At first, it might sound convenient. No need for long-haul flights, trade routes on land, drive from Paris to Cape Town. But convenience comes with a cost. With one giant landmass, Earth's climate would spiral into chaos. The massive interior would become a super desert, hotter than the Sahara, stretching thousands of miles. No ocean currents to regulate temperature, no coastal winds to bring rain inland. Instead, continents would bake, crops would die, ecosystems would collapse, and the coastlines? They'd be worse. With so much energy trapped in a single ocean, superstorms would form, hurricanes that dwarf anything we've seen, wrapping around entire coastlines, slamming megacities year-round. Even the planet's tectonics would be unstable. One landmass means one fault line stretching across the entire world, one rupture, and we're talking continent-wide earthquakes, volcanic winters, mass extinction. And without separate continents, evolution might have looked very different. Isolated continents gave rise to Earth's diversity. Mammals in one place, marsupials in another, birds, reptiles, amphibians evolving in isolated pockets. But if Pangaea still ruled the Earth, you might never see a kangaroo never hear a songbird, never meet a human at all. Because in a world with no boundaries, the strongest don't just survive, they take everything. With no oceans to divide species, nature wouldn't specialize, it would dominate. In today's world, biodiversity thrives because continents are isolated. But on Pangaea, there's no isolation, just competition, brutal, constant and unforgiving. That means only the most aggressive, most adaptable predators would survive. And they wouldn't just survive, they'd evolve into nightmares. Picture this, 
an apex land predator that combines the brute force of Postosuchus, the armor of Sorosuchus, and the speed of Lilian Sternus, fused into one perfect killing machine. A creature that doesn't wait in ambush, but runs you down in the open, slashes, crushes, ends. Now take to the skies. With fewer mountains and windbreaks, flying predators would get massive. Think wingspans over 30 feet, like Ornithochiris, only bigger. These creatures would glide across superheated updrafts, never needing to land. Their prey? Anything that moves. And in the oceans, or rather, the vast circular sea of Panthalassa, evolution goes in a different direction. You wouldn't find whales or dolphins. Instead, Shastasaurus and Liopleurodon might still dominate the deep. Sleek, massive, and terrifyingly fast. Imagine a predator 60 feet long, weighing 90 tons, with no sonar. Just pure instinct in a jaw strong enough to suck a man-sized animal in whole. And then, there's what we don't get. No lemurs, no sloths, no birds of paradise. Because evolution depends on separation, on islands, on drift, on distance. On Pangaea, one species wins. The rest disappear. And what about us? Would humans ever have evolved if mammal-like reptiles hadn't been given space to rise? Would our ancestors have stood a chance in a world ruled by super predators that never went extinct? Or would we still be hiding in burrows, hunted by monsters from the Triassic? Because if Pangaea had never shattered, Earth might still belong to the beasts. Let's say, somehow, Humans did evolve in this world, one species of early hominid managing to survive in the shadows of predators and volcanic wastelands. What kind of civilization could rise in a place like Pangaea? First, forget borders, forget continents. There would be no Europe, no Asia, no Americas. Just one crowded landmass, packed with billions of people competing for the same rivers, forests, and coastlines. Cooperation? Maybe. But more likely, conflict. With so many regions connected by land, disease would spread like wildfire, faster than any pandemic we've ever seen. Trade routes would be direct, but so would war paths. Empires could stretch thousands of miles, but so could rebellions. And climate? Even worse. The interior of Pangaea would be nearly uninhabitable, a continent-sized desert scorched by the sun. Civilization would cling to the edges, where water still fell. But those regions would be pounded by superstorms. Imagine hurricanes the size of countries, striking year-round. Coastal cities? Gone? Inland migration? Impossible. And beneath your feet, the earth groans. Because with all that land packed into one slab of tectonic crust, megaquakes and supervolcanoes wouldn't be rare. They'd be regular. A single volcanic winter could collapse every global food system. A super eruption could wipe out entire nations in minutes. And then there's evolution. No continents? no unique flora or fauna. Agriculture might never have diversified. No corn in the Americas, no rice in Asia, no wheat in the Middle East. One food system, one failure, and humanity starves. Maybe we'd never reach the modern age. Or maybe we'd be stuck in a brutal, war-torn world where the environment was always trying to kill us. A planet where survival wasn't guaranteed. And progress came at a price we couldn't pay. If Pangaea still existed, Earth would be one giant pressure cooker. And sooner or later, it would blow. The last time this supercontinent existed, it ended with the most devastating extinction event in Earth's history. The Permian-Triassic extinction up to 96% of marine life, gone. 70% of land animals, wiped out. Why? 
Because when all land is fused into one, the planet can't breathe. Volcanic gases can't disperse. Ocean currents can't cool the atmosphere. Rain stops falling inland. And toxic gases, like methane and carbon dioxide, start to build up in the skies. Now imagine that happening today, with 8 billion people on board. We'd face continent-wide heat waves hotter than Death Valley, lasting for decades. Mega droughts that turn entire nations into wastelands. And once those droughts break, superstorms slam the coast like rotating wrecking balls. Hurricane after hurricane with no end in sight. But the worst part? The ground beneath us. With one mega plate holding all land together, earthquakes wouldn't be regional. They'd be global. A rupture in one area could send shockwaves through thousands of miles, collapsing infrastructure, triggering tsunamis, and awakening dormant volcanoes. And then there's the supervolcanoes, like the Siberian traps, which may have triggered the last mass extinction. In a world like Pangaea, these eruptions could blacken the skies, block the sun for years, and plunge the planet into an artificial ice age. Crops would fail. Power grids would collapse. Billions could die. This isn't just an alternate Earth. It's a warning. Because the forces that once tore Pangaea apart are still alive today. And one day, millions of years from now, they might just fuse the continents back together. And when that happens, history might not repeat itself. It might end. So, what if Earth never broke apart? No continents, no oceans between us, just one supercontinent, cursed by storms, scorched by the sun, and haunted by beasts that never went extinct. Maybe we'd adapt, maybe we'd survive, or maybe we'd never exist at all. Pangaea was more than a landmass. It was a crucible, a place that shaped life and then shattered it. Its breakup gave rise to everything we know, ecosystems, biodiversity, even humans. So maybe the real question isn't what if it still existed, but what price was paid to tear it apart? Now we want to know what you think. Would you survive in a world ruled by one continent and endless monsters? Or did Earth get lucky when it cracked itself open? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We read every one. And if this blew your mind, there's more where that came from. Until next time on Planet Extinct.